All right, that's it. We made it through the podium portion of the Scouting Combine. It's your boys, Mike Dusso, Evan Lazar, Patriots.com. We have been here in Indy all week. We've seen all the prospects, Evan. And today, we're going to give you a final rundown. First, though, we're going to talk about the offensive line because we saw them today. Huge need for the Patriots. And, Evan, it looks like there are some big, big guys that could really help the team. Big, athletic well-spoken guys out there today this yeah. is an impressive group and i've been saying it since watching all these guys on film coming into the combine that i really like this group at tackle there's a number of plug-and-play starters for the patriots i'd say more so on the right side but i think there's a couple left tackle options that we can get into as well if they want to go in that direction but you talk about the most immediate need on the depth chart for the new england patriots i don't think there's any question in anybody's mind that tackle based off of how it went last year especially on the right side but just in general looking at the entire depth chart that has to be the biggest need on the team right now well let's start right at the top and we kicked things off this morning with peter skaronski which was yeah. you know big questions a little bit about his arms not as big of a deal when you're talking to him certainly looks everything like we've heard a three-year starter at left tackle at northwestern um, just a guy that seems to check all the boxes just some questions about his length but then you pair him against the guys that we just saw paris johnson and broderick jones two big big guys not as experienced as him but have the athletic and size profile that you look for at left tackle. So I, I don't know if I really learned anything today. I'm just more intrigued by these guys. And I think really all three, you can make an argument that they make sense. It's so it's antiquated that we talk about arm length and we get so caught up in the fact so that, play. that he has shorter arms maybe by an inch compared to what the threshold might necessarily be the guy that he talked a lot about though at the podium was his former teammate Rashawn Slater who came in with 33 inch arms and that was the big thing about Slater is that he's got short arms he's going to be a guard in the league and he goes to the Chargers and is a stud right away at left tackle so what are we really talking about here I think we get caught up in these types of things a little bit too much and with Skaronski as well I would just say that he's somebody that has that polish and that experience that the Patriots tend to gravitate towards one of the few guys at the top of this board at the tackle class that has the three-year starters mm -hmm label under his belt and I think when you look at New England they're typically in the senior bowl they're at the shrine bowl uh, they're at experience they want guys that have been in the league or been you know starting excuse me at the college ranks for multiple seasons and not somebody that just had a cup of coffee in, in the college game and I think yeah. that, that is what Skaronski is yeah and that's the conversation we had was that look even if Skaronski didn't work out it seems like this guy's going to be able to play in the league maybe he is a guard but he looks like he can play uh, Certainly. but they're, they're not alone and there are some other tackles we were, ta we were talking earlier today people here at ESPN they, they it goes down to do you have to make the move early on on the tackle can you take a cornerback it looks like the receivers are falling out a little bit but there are some options at tackle later in the day there are some options there and I thought uh, Jordan Reed our guest on the podcast mentioned Tyler Steen which I thought was a really good uh, connection there obviously played under uh, Bill O'Brien last season just for one year at Alabama because he transferred from Vanderbilt but he played for Alabama last year at left tackle a guy that I think could play tackle or guard and I think if you're looking later on in the draft let's say they double dipped at, at the position because I think the depth chart calls for a double dip in this year's draft at tackle maybe Steen is a guy that okay we could see him at tackle as a swing tackle if we want to play him there but at guard I think he's a starter and if you talk about two or three years from now and maybe Michael Onwenu with his contract situation or whatever uh, the case may be now maybe we have a starting position open up for Tyler Steen in the inside which is maybe some flexibility there with the second pick if they do yeah. double dip at the position yeah Mar Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse another guy I listened to uh, you know just like what he had to say he says hey I can play both sides but I'm coming into this league I want to be a left tackle all right he Evan was taller than yeah. I expected yeah Bergeron what did he come in at I, I don't oh, they no. haven't measured in yet but I I, I thought he was going to be more of that square guard build but he he was slender and he tall. Did. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's the, that's here. the old lineman. Let's let's get a quick recap here of this week that we've been here. Of course, as we tape this, there's still some testing to go. So we'll you know see the speed of the the wide receivers uh, as well as you know yeah. how much these guys are going to bench in the offensive line, all those kind of things. Um, but I think overall, for me, the big thing I take away is yes, yeah, certainly the tackles. But I look at the cornerback class, and I think that that is the strength of this class. And I think that you know even talking to Jordan earlier, they need depth at that position. And there seems like there's a lot of guys there. If there's a headline for me 
coming out of this combine, at least this portion of it, it's that there are a lot of good cornerbacks that could help the Patriots. I'm right there with you. It's hard to look any other position. I think the edge defenders were also pretty impressive on the first yeah. night out at workouts. Guys like Nolan Smith, obviously, at the top there, but some other guys, too, that I think are interesting for the Patriots in the middle rounds for a position that's not necessarily a top need, but I have to go corners as well. At this class, Jordan mentioned maybe 15 corners uh, going in the top 100 I've heard almost as up to maybe 20 uh, from some people as you walk around here in Indy so this is a absolutely load cornerback class I don't necessarily think it needs to be a day one position that they target but if they do then Joey Porter Jr. Christian Gonzalez Devin Witherspoon those guys are going to be terrific players in the league and I think even I know Patriots fans don't necessarily love when they trade down in the first round but I think if corner is where they want to go with that pick if you trade it back into the 20s and then a guy like a Deontay Banks starts to make sense or some of the guys later on in the first round cam smith all of a sudden there's just so much depth at that position that you can really just get your pick of the litter almost yeah. I, I think in some ways although I, I do think that those guys gonzalez porter jr and witherspoon have a real good chance to go top 10 second position i just want to highlight we talked about the tackles obviously but is of course wide receiver it's a big need and you know patriots sitting at 14th overall Jordan, you know, explain this isn't that this isn't the same draft as the last few years in terms of the wide receivers. There's not that A plus elite guy. And as we're starting right. to see some of the measurements come in, that's kind of confirming that. Uh, I don't want to say that I'm disappointed, but I think that the Patriots are going to have to be smarter in days two and three and trying to find interior quickness. That's what I've been saying all week. If you've been watching these, that's what I want. But looking at guys that can maybe come in on day two and contribute inside. But I don't know about day one. It seems like this is a tough class, even with Quentin Johnston, who certainly made an impression this week. Yeah, we'll get to Quentin Johnson in a second. I think that that's where I'm at with this wide receiver class and I've been gravitating towards there more and more and more is that let's find a good role player or a guy that fits a role. I, sh I shouldn't use role player, but a guy that fits a role specifically uh, with a specific kind of skill set, whether it's an outside guy or an inside guy. I don't know if your number one receiver is in this draft class, but what I do know is that there's a ton of slot receivers in this class. So if you want that jitterbug, Edelman, Welker quickness, a guy like Josh Downs, Tank Dell, somebody like that, on day two is a big possibility. Well, I mean, if you're sure for those three cone times, we know how we love <laughs> those. Those will be coming in later today. All right, finally, we're just going to give you, of course, we've, we haven't seen all the testing yet, so we're going to give you our guys who are the best, the most interesting, the most fun, our, our, our podium picks of the week, our if you will. Our all-podium team. Our all-podium team, three guys each. Um, Evan, why don't you start us off with your first one? Yeah, look, this guy blew me away and took me by surprise. I think everybody that's watched our draft content so, so far knows that I'm very lukewarm on the Patriots taking Quentin Johnston from TCU because of some of his – he's a big receiver on the outside. He's got some parallels to some of the names of the past that I won't mention. Uh, so Quentin Johnston, though, at the podium was impressive. He was really got this calm, cool, confident demeanor, not overconfident, not cocky, but the exact type of alpha that you want out of the, your number one wide receiver. And I, I think he's got uh, that demeanor about him that's going to translate well. All right, I'm going to go with the wide receiver, too, for mine. And again, we talked about later guys, and that's, for me, Jordan Reed, who I just really liked. He came up with sunglasses, you know, explained, hey, I got a little eye thing going on. I'm not trying to be cool up here. Yeah. Um, but really liked what he had to say. Love his game. Love what he did at the Senior Bowl. When I saw him, everything you were talking about, how can we get one of those guys in day two? It seems like he's the kind of guy uh, that would be fit. Uh, number two for you. Number two, I, I'm going to steal one from you. Oh, no. I'm going to do it, so you're going to have to re revisit I'll steal yourself. one from you then. Joey Porter Jr. I, I, this guy just looks the part. He looks like he's been well coached and well trained by his father and he was just up there holding court there's a mob around his podium like there's got to be 50 reporters trying to talk to him and he just handled it so smoothly well you stole mine i'm, I'm gonna have to go back to I the know, one i originally audible. picked which was was jacorian bennett uh, it's a cornerback from maryland the two maryland cornerbacks last night blew up the combine with their speed um again just you know you get up there you see these guys who have that confidence uh you see what he does on the field and he's just one of many of those cornerbacks that we picked um well you went so i'm gonna sneak in my last one yeah, too yeah. broderick jones from georgia there um you and you know i just what I love, aggressive guy, a big guy, a big tackle. Looking at him, it's, man, this is the kind of per personality, presence that would change this team up front as far as the offensive line. A little bit raw for sure, but he has that edge. I loved him. The reason why I went Porter Jr. is because we talked a lot about Nolan Smith, I feel like, already. He was great at the podium, yeah. though. The last one I'll give you, Michael Mayer, Notre Dame tight end. Feels like a guy that's going to be a team captain at the next level. Just intense 
confident, has that real though uh, intensity. Like you feel like you're going to run through a brick wall for the guy. And he's a captain at Notre Dame. Uh, he's got that first round demeanor and polish. And yeah. I, I think he's going to be a good player. All right, one more silly one each because you know, hey, we're, yeah. we've been here five, six days. We don't even know. We've lost yeah. track, so we're getting a little bit punchy. Um, but we're going to have one silly one for you. For me, it was the one guy just walking around asking everyone if, if they had met with the Tampa Bay Bucks and whether it was informal or formal. That was it. That was the only question. So, um, and you know, I just got to use this opportunity to say, like, these guys, when people ask them if they've met with teams, they're like, uh, I think so. And then it gets tweeted out as if, yeah. like, this is big news. Like, all right. these guys are meeting with all the teams. So I just thought it was funny, this guy going around. Tampa Bay Bucks, every single time, every scrum you're in, you knew you were getting that one. My, the medicals, the yeah. MRI machine. I'm sitting here. I'm waiting. The last day, we've been here for six days. We don't know what day it is. I, I, I don't even know what time it is. And I'm waiting for Dewan Jones from Ohio State to appear from uh, in the back there to talk to us in the media. And they come up to the media and they say, he's not coming. He's stuck in medical. And uh, that was a little bit disappointing to not see the mountain, as I yeah. like to call him here at the Combine. Which was the same thing that happened to Devin Witherspoon, who yeah. was you know, another top prospect cornerback that we didn't get to take a look at. So I guess that's going to do it for Deuce and Lazar in Indy. It was a great week. We learned a ton. And of course, all this information is only going to inform our coverage over the next couple months. But be on the tune. Uh, be, in, be on the lookout over this next week. We'll have plenty of wrap-up content, try to put a bow on this thing after what we just did here. So thanks for checking out everything, and there's certainly way more to come.